Okay. All right. Oh. There. Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Now, uh, we are all hoping, I know, that more people will come this morning. But right now, it's time to start, and we're in. The quality always gets here first, and then the other ones just drift in. <laughs> no, we are, we are so glad that you are here today. God bless you for being here. And uh, last week, we canceled our business meeting because we were missing so many people. But I can't continue to do that. So we're going to have our business meeting today. And um, good or bad, good, bad, or indifferent, we're going to do it. And um, uh, we're just going to pray that God will lead us and guide us. And you know, that's what we do for everything, isn't it? Amen. I mean, I don't start a day without asking God uh, to guide me and lead me and help me. Um, and, uh, and then the next prayer I pray is, God, I'm sorry I make so many mistakes. <laughs> We're going to start worshiping the Lord, and we need you guys to really help us today. And I want you to do two things. I want you to really sing into this, because you're going to have to sing for about five people. All right? <laughs> so Mary, I'm going to be listening for you. <laughs> and then uh, we're singing a song called... Um, uh, thy loving kindness and we're going to in the middle of that I'm going to ask people who have something to praise God for to stand up um, or sit down and share that okay you'd be thinking now listen uh, do I have your attention Amen. you'd be thinking about that okay alright good job from Ramon and Mary Jane it's good to see you guys God bless you God bless you. Okay, we're ready to go. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord. I don't know what you came to do, but I came to praise the Lord.
Okay, let's go with this one. Thy loving kindness. Thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee. I will lift up my hands unto thy name. I lift my hands, Lord, unto thy name. I lift my hands, Lord, unto Shy. Don't make me come back there. He's a knucklehead. Stand up. <laughs> he just he just sunk down to the floor. So he is here. The only, the only problem he's having today is he's a Buccaneers fan. Oh. <laughs> and that's a serious problem. <laughs> okay. You know what? We all. It's not always easy to share. I know that. But we all have something to thank God for. We all have something to praise God for. Amen. And on behalf of our church, you know, I look around and I see a lot of people that aren't here that should be here. But that's between them and God. But we can pray for them. And you know, folks, if you see somebody that's not here today that you know well enough to call, Give them a call and tell them we missed them and that they need to get back in church. And uh, right now, that's about all we can do. And just pray that God will put this all back together. And I know he will in his time. Let's sing this again, Thy Loving Kindness. Thy loving kindness is better than love.
verses 1 through 5. And I'm going to read it for you, and Dennis is going to say our morning prayer. O oh God, you are my God. I shall seek you earnestly. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh yearns for you. In a dry and weary land where there is no water. Thus I have seen you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Because your loving kindness is better than my life, my lips shall praise you. Does that ring a bell? Amen. That's where the song came from, from this verse. Because your loving kindness, so I will bless you as long as I live, I will lift up my hands in your name. My soul is satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth offers praise with my joyful lips. Praise the Lord, Dennis. Dear Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace, we just pause and take this time and reflect on you, Lord. And Lord, we just pray that you be with our service today. Just pour out your Holy Spirit upon this place. Continue to indwell here and indwell your people. We ask in the name and the power of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> it's good to see you today. And, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. Uh, not funny, uh, just sort of unique. Um, I don't know how you do, but I spend most of my week waiting and planning for Sunday to come. And um, it's sort of like when Sunday comes and we have a chance to be together and worship, it's like the high place in the week for me to see you here. And I love you guys as much as I love my regular family. I trust you and love you, and I thank you for being here during hard times. And I know these are hard times. Amen. I know that Hector and Lori and that are usually here with us. They're, they're so. I think, um, uh, I, did I see, I thought I saw um, Maria coming. Did Maria yeah, come Maria's in? here. Okay, all right, and they're here. Um, we've got a lot of people that are sick. We have a lot of people that are afraid. And I understand that. I understand that. Let's pray for them, pray for each one, that we will get strong and well, that we will not be afraid of the unseen things, because God is always with us and promises never to forsake us or leave us. As you know, we're having a business meeting today, and I have to tell you, I contemplated canceling it again because of um, fear. I mean, I already knew some people that were going to be here, and I did not want to do this with a small group. However, I'm, I'm going to move ahead. Uh, what we're dealing with today is somewhat of a touchy thing. I realize that not everybody is in favor of it, and I want you to know, folks, I'm not pushing this down your throat at all. It's something that God put on my heart, and, and I'm perfectly willing to go in the direction that the church chooses. And um, so keep that in mind. I don't want anybody to say, yeah, you kept at it, you kept at it until he finally got his way. That's not what I'm trying to do at all. Um, in fact, that's why I canceled last week, because I wanted there to be more people here to voice their opinions. And we're going to be talking about this later. We're going to have a business meeting at the end of this service. And I want you all to stay. It's not going to be long. It's not going to be a long one at all. So thank you for being here. God bless you for coming. And uh, we are praying every day for your families and for you. And um, I'm not certain. I, I'm not certain, but I think the Johnson family is, well, I think the problem right now is um, Maynard. I'm not sure, but I've talked to, I talked to Nils this last week, and she says most of them are doing, doing well. Um, we didn't think that Lori was going to be real sick. She quarantined herself for a whole week, and the day she came back 
back to work, she got sick. And so she's on quarantine again. <laughs> and uh, Hector thought, you know, maybe I better stay in quarantine with her. And so <clears throat> he's doing that. And um, I want to tell you something else that uh, <clears throat> I may be out of line with. And I, and of course, uh, you always know that I'm out of line a lot. <laughs> But you love me, and if I do get out of line, forgive me. But my son and his girlfriend are getting married next month. It's going to be on February 22nd. Don't ask me why. That's a Tuesday. I'm just the dad. But it's going to be Tuesday. Uh, they wanted to have two, 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 two. February 2nd, 2022. They said that was the first time date they ever had was on that day. Yeah. I understand that. It's going to be in the afternoon. I know a lot of people have to work. But you are getting a personal invitation from me to come. I would love to have all of you here. And they would too. And if you didn't get an invitation somehow, know please that you are invited. And there's going to be um, an invitation in the bulletin coming up very soon. But I wanted you to hear that you are all invited. This whole church is invited. So pray for them um, as you prayed for me when I got married. Because I was in this church the first time when I got married, Sandy and I. And um, please continue to pray for us. We're, Sandy's really having a rough time. She's uh, uh, just not well. Just not well. And uh, so, uh, remember her prayer. And I know you will. And I know you do. Thank you for that. Let's see. Let's uh, take it off, shall we? Now, today, the Harmony Quartet was supposed to sing. But um, Janice, uh, we think, had things. She has COVID or she's just sick. She's just sick and couldn't sing. And then Lori was out. So thank you for Rachel, who has driven. We put together a trio today. And uh, so if you're getting tired of hearing us, that's why. <laughs> so who's going to pray? Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you for your loving kindness, Lord God, that you show us each and every day. And you bless us with our health and our, our very mind, Lord God. I just want to ask that you would bless this offer, Lord God, and multiply it, Lord God, for your good. We thank you, Lord God, for the church, Lord God, every day. We thank you for the Lord God, the church, Lord God. And I pray, dear God, that this year would bring growth multiplication, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, and ask all this in the Lord Jesus Christ's name. Amen. And everybody said Amen. Amen. got two songs to sing for you today. Um, I like both of them. I don't know how they feel about them. <laughs> There's a, the, you know what, the, whoever I'm singing with sort of carries me because I make a lot of mistakes when we sing. And they are very kind to, what are you laughing about? <laughs> I do, I make a lot of mistakes, and sometimes you don't catch it at all, but they do, and they'll look at me and they go, 
like they'll give me the they'll give me the rolling eyes like, <laughs> like that. But I love these two ladies so much, and I think that I think that they put up with me because I love to sing. No, I don't just love to sing. I've got to sing. Isn't that isn't that true? People who sing like this, we have to. It's so much in our blood and so much in our in our thinking and our we have to sing. And so that's what we're doing. Good, bad, or indifferent. <laughs> we're gonna say, oh what a happy day.
glad me
and she cut herself on the arm with her knife real bad. Um, my son had to take her to the emergency and they had to stitch her up. I don't know how many stitches she had, but she was in there for a long time. And uh, so pray, her name's uh, Raquel. She's a believer and uh, uh, she just had an accident in the kitchen. And so just remember her prayer, as well as each one of these others. Anybody else that you would like to add? Let's bow our heads. And I'd like for you to silently and quietly pray for those that are sick that you know personally. Just pray for them right now quietly. Heavenly Father, you've heard the names that are not only written on this piece of paper, but are written on our hearts. People we care about, people we love, and people we want to remember in this way. Father, those uh, folks that are sick, uh, sometimes when you're sick and you're laying in bed, it's hard to think clearly. And we're thinking for them as we pray for you, as they reach out for you, as they want to get well, as they want to grow strong. And we pray for them, Lord, each one. And lift them up to you and ask that you touch them and heal them and strengthen them and work a miracle in every life, oh God, we pray. We thank you for these folks. We thank you for this church, we praise. And this morning, as we continue with our service, we pray, Lord, that you will bless us and speak to our hearts. In Jesus' name. Um, today we are uh, not going to be talking about a parable like we mostly have been doing in recent weeks we are going to talk about something that really happened and it's one of the scariest things in the Bible. And it's about the Gadarene demoniac. It's written about in all the Gospels except um, John, I think. I'm not sure. I think in most of them. Mark gives the, the clearest um, account of this. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to read the whole chapter. We're only going to go through verse 20. I'm going to read all the way through to verse 20. I want you to see and hear what's happening. And then I'm going to be talking about it afterwards, okay? So it starts in chapter 5, verse 1. They came to the other side of the sea into the country of the Gerasenes. You remember last week Jesus and his disciples were crossing the Sea of Galilee. And remember what happened? There was a storm and the, they were getting swamped in their boat, and they said, Lord, Lord, do you not care about us? And he calmed the wind, and he calmed the water, and you remember that situation and that miracle, and they just shook their heads and looked at each other and says, in fact, uh, uh, they said, they became very much afraid and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Well, this is where they were going. Don't tell me Jesus didn't know where he was going and who he was going to meet. I believe he knew every situation, everything that was coming up, and what God would have him do and what God would have him say. And he was on his way to the Gerasenes, and he knew what was going to happen there. Of course, his disciples did not. Verse 2 goes on and says, When he got out of the boat, immediately... A man from the tombs, from the tombs, with an unclean spirit met him. And he had his dwelling place among the tombs. And no one was able to bind him anymore, even with a chain. So even when they bound him with a chain, he would break it loose and run wild. Because he often had often been bound with shackles and chains and the chains had been torn apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces and no one was strong enough to subdue him. 
This was truly and genuinely a wild man. Constantly, night and day, he was screaming among the tombs and in the mountains and then gashing himself with stones. This was an unhappy man. In verse 6, it says, See Jesus from a distance. He ran up and bowed down before him. Now, how did this guy know who Jesus was? I don't think this guy was going to church anywhere. And I know he hadn't been in the synagogue. But the unclean spirits within him knew this was Jesus, and they were frightened and afraid. Because look what happens next. And shouting with a loud voice, he said, What business do we have with each other, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I implore you, I implore you by God, do not torment me. For he had been saying to him, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he was asking him, What is your name? Because very often in dealing with demons and unclean spirits, most of them have a name. And he said to him, My name is Legion, for we are many. There was a legion of unclean spirits and demons within him. Is that amazing? Amen. And he began to implore him earnestly not to send them out of the country. And there was a large herd of swine feeding nearby on the mountain. Now this tells us about what kind of place that they were in right now because of the swine. What clue comes to mind? Not kosher. <laughs> it wasn't kosher. <laughs> Hebrews did not have anything to do with swine, but the Gentiles did. And he had gone over to the other side of the Sea of Galilee to this Gentile area that is just below Decapolis. So we're gonna look at a map in just a little bit. But in verse 12, the demons implored him saying, send us into the swine so that we may enter them. The demons knew they were, they were gonna to have to get out of this guy because they knew who this was. So they're saying, let us go into the swine. Jesus gave them permission, and coming out, the unclean spirits entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the sea, and 2,000 of them, they were all drowned in the sea. That's one way to deal with it, isn't it? Amen. Their herdsmen ran away and reported it in the city and in the country, and the people came to see what it was that had happened. They came to Jesus and observed the man who had been demon-possessed setting down, clothed, and in his right mind, the very man who had had the legion, and they became frightened. People always become unsure and frightened when they see things or hear things happening that they don't understand. If you look back at most of the times that Jesus preached and that Jesus was teaching, um, he most all the time cast out demons among people that was in the crowd. And when he sent, sent out his disciples to go out into the countryside, he prayed for them and gave them the power to preach and to heal and to minister. When they came back, they were telling him all the great things that had happened. He says, the Lord we were having a problem with casting out demons. And Jesus nodded his head and said, yes, many of these require prayer and fasting to go out. We're gonna talk about that in more depth some of the time. So verse 16, those who had seen it happen, uh, it described to them how it had happened to the demon-possessed man and all about the swine. And they began to implore him to leave their region. Why would that be? Uh, somebody that has solved one of their biggest problems. How would you like to live in the neighborhood of the tombs and listen to him screeching and crying and yelling uh, and screaming every night and, and woeing around that night? That wouldn't sound like a very safe neighborhood to me. And verse 
18, and he was getting into the boat. The man who had been demon-possessed was imploring him that he might accompany him. And he did not let him, but he said to him, Go home to your people and report to them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he had mercy on you. And he went away and began to proclaim in Decapolis what great things Jesus had done for him, and everyone was amazed. Can you imagine the neighborhood wild man that they had tried to bind and chain and somehow control, running around living in the tombs? That's just scary in itself, but what if he lived near you? You know, they were afraid of this man. They didn't know what to do. Along comes a man that knows what to do and deals with it, and they ask him to leave. Isn't that, that's interesting. Amen. And you know what? We, we do that sometimes, particularly unsaved people do that. We'll have a problem, and we'll maybe pray about the problem. And we'll pray that God will step in and do something, that God will step in and heal or change the situation or, or help you um, in some way. And very often God will do that. And then once he does it, it's, we almost take the attitude, okay, God, thanks a lot. See you around if I have another problem. And there are a lot of people like that. And um, so here is a very strange and interesting situation. I want to make a few comments because uh, we are in this, every one of us, in some fashion. Everyone, the Bible says, is born into sin. Amen. But there is a childhood time of innocence as well for every man, for every person. I remember when I was a boy, and I know I refer to my childhood a lot. That's the one I know best. I guess I can start talking about Kathy's or Rachel's, but not I can do that. <laughs> no, we all know what happened when we were kids. We look back and either we had a happy childhood or we didn't. We look back and we either had a questionable childhood or we didn't even know, wondered what, going, what was going on. A lot of kids play out till it gets dark and come home because they have to, because they don't really want to come home. Things are so bad at home. I cannot tell you the sad and unstable and ungodly situations that I have tried to help people in and counsel. Even when I was a deputy sheriff years ago, we would get um, domestic violence calls and we would go to the house. And I had a friend who was another patrolman with the sheriff's department and he had gone to one several weeks before me and they killed him with a shotgun right through the screen door. He didn't get a chance to knock on the door. They, shut, they blew him away through the screen door on the front porch. So I was driving, and my partner were driving up this driveway. Guess what was on my mind? Yeah. I wondered if there was a shotgun waiting there for me. Because you read the news, you hear the news, you see what happens to policemen often. You see what goes on on the streets. It's ugly. It's a Satan. And I remember praying on my way up that driveway. When I got the call, I thought, oh my gosh. And I began to pray that God would help me and guide me and direct me. But we're all born into sin, but we go through a period of innocence. I remember getting up and being overjoyed about the packages of toys under the, under the tree, hoping that there would be cranberry sauce at, at dinner time. Loving my grandma, loving my grandpa, loving my family. Fortunately, I grew up in a very loving family, but not everybody does. Some people grow up in hell holes, and I've seen a lot of them. Legion was not always possessed and filled with demons and unclean spirits. What happened to this guy? 
He had a childhood that began somewhere, and I'm certain that his mom and dad weren't living in one of the tombs when they gave birth to him. But something happened to this man that seemed to invite every unclean thing of Satan into his life. And you know how that happens, folks? One at a time. Amen. One at a time. We'll do something or say something or go somewhere that we know is wrong. Guess what? The next time it's a whole lot easier. And when we go places and do things that are wrong, Satan begins to build a nest inside of you and begins to camp there. This man must have had some real bad habits or done some really bad things for him to be possessed with so many unclean spirits. There's not another place in the Bible that even goes near this at all. But it happened one day at a time as he gave way to sin. Now, you know what? We all know as Christians, the Bible teaches us not to do this, not to do that, not to do this, not to do that. And that God would have us live a holy life. That God would call, wants us to draw near to Jesus. There's a scripture in James. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. And you've heard me say a thousand times, embrace the things of God. In a nutshell, that's what we're supposed to do. Draw near to the Lord and embrace the things of God. But not everybody does that. And some people have a problem doing that. And some people don't know how to do that. And of course, that's the church's job, to find them, to teach them, to minister to them and help them. Apparently, no one came along for this guy. And there was a time when this innocent little boy was just playing in front of his home with his mom and dad watching him. And somewhere, he turned in the wrong direction. The Bible says in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, I know you know this verse. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Fortunately, not everybody that sins gets a demon. I think this guy got enough for all of us. Look around you today and see the people who are going in the wrong direction. If God had not intervened in our lives, ours, you realize where we could be today. And I know some of you here that were almost there. And God had to do a really amazing dynamic work in your life to turn you away from it. But, Look at the people around us that are unhappy, that are sad, that don't even know how to raise their kids if they have kids, that don't even know how to treat anybody, that don't even have friends. There's a lot of unhappiness and sadness in this world because these people do not know Jesus. And sometimes it gets so bad that it goes in the direction of Legion. The Bible teaches us that things will get, get, get difficult and that tribulation will get worse. I know there's a lot of confusion sometimes about what's going to happen next with, with regard to God and the end times prophecy. And we've heard of the rapture, we've heard of tribulation, we've heard of the second coming, we've heard of the, the temple in heaven, we've heard of the new heaven and the new earth, we've heard of this and we've heard of that. And sometimes it gets very complicated. Even when you're studying, right ladies? <laughs> it still gets complicated, doesn't it? Basically what's happening today in our world is we are in tribulation right now. 
Amen. If you do not know that, you need to realize we are in the tribulation today, but we are not in the great tribulation. The Bible talks about the great tribulation, and it will be seven years long, but we're not there yet. It says it's the great tribulation because it's going to be unlike the world has ever seen before. People will be unable to buy bread. People will be unable to buy oil. People will not have the money to do this or that. And if they don't have the mark of the beast, they won't be able to do anything. At the beginning of this tribulation, what starts the great tribulation off and makes it begin to work and go is when the rapture occurs. The Bible talks about the rapture. It talks about Jesus is going to meet us in the sky and we are going to meet him and he will take us all to heaven and we will dwell with him forever and ever. When the Christians are pulled out of the world, that gives Satan even more power to cause general havoc and ugliness take over in this world because the Holy Spirit is gone. See, every Christian has the Holy Spirit. Amen. When the Holy Spirit is repaired, is removed, there's nothing to hold evil back. It's gone, and it runs rampant. So when the rapture occurs, that's the beginning of the seven years of tribulation. And it is during that seven years that the Antichrist is revealed. It is during that time that he enters the temple and proclaims himself to be God. And where he demands that everyone take the mark of the beast. And we all know some of these things and a little bit of this and a little bit of that. But sometimes it's hard to understand, okay, when is what happening when? And so it's like it is today. Then comes the rapture. Then comes the great tribulation, antichrist, false prophet, the beast, and it comes up to a time when you're going to see this. The second coming is when Jesus comes with his angels at the end of tribulation. He's going to come and he's going to do battle and he's going to clean up the earth. Amen. I want to share something else with you. A lot of people think that once the rapture takes place, you're done. There's no way to become a Christian or be saved. But that's not true. The Bible says that during tribulation, people can still be saved, but in a different way. The Bible says we are saved by grace and faith as we receive the Lord Jesus Christ into our heart. So we have a grace relationship with God. We have been forgiven of our sins. When we don't deserve it, God has received us anyway because we've received Jesus. They won't be able to do that during the tribulation. But the Bible says, those who refuse to take the mark of the beast will have a chance to be saved. There's special, specific places in Revelation where it talks about that, specifically. When the rapture occurs, you know what's going to happen? People, little kids uh, that are left, and, and I, I don't even know where to go with that subject, are going to say, I knew this was going to happen. Remember, Grandma told us. Remember, Grandpa used to read the Bible and tell us about this, and people are going to remember and say, oh, no, it's true. They knew what they were talking about. And they were going to remember, don't take the mark of the beast. Amen. Whatever you do. And you'll probably be killed for that. And you'll go to be with Jesus because you've made a choice between wickedness and evil and godliness. And Jesus has received you because you have believed in him. Now, that's a whole other story in Revelation. It's a difficult one to explain and to look at all the scriptures and everything. But God has specifically from his throne in Revelation spoke to those people 
who were killed and were waiting at the throne to be to be allowed to enter into heaven. And they stand up and the, the Bible says they God is holding them under the altar before the throne. And they in, in chapter six they say, Lord, how much longer will we have to stay here like this and wait? And he tells them that the wait will be over soon. And he gave them all white robes and said, just be patient for a little longer. Meaning, it won't be long, tribulation, the great tribulation will end. And you will enter in with everyone else. So don't get confused when the people talk about the second coming of Christ. That's not the rapture. The second coming of Christ is at the end of the seven years. It's also known by another name. The day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. When he comes back and he says, enough is enough. And you're going to see him coming like this up here. Tribulation gets worse after the rapture. The Antichrist is revealed. Those who will not worship him will be put to death. Then the Lord comes with his angels. The second coming. I'm going to read, it, read you a passage of scripture out of Mark. This is coming up in the 13th chapter of where we're reading now. But I want to read this because it fits in here. Mark chapter 13 verses 24 through 27. But in those days after the tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. And the stars will be falling from heaven. And the powers that, the powers that are in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send forth his angels and will gather together the elect from the four winds from the end of the earth to the end of heaven. Everyone that has been saved during the tribulation, he gathers together and takes with him. Now there's a lot more to it than this. And you need to, to study about it and, uh, you know, read and, and understand it, but God will give you understanding. And these are the basics. Just like Legion, at some time in our lives, we will meet Jesus face to face. We are here today, most of us, because we are believers, because we have met Jesus face to face, where he has spoken to our hearts, where we have acknowledged him, as who he is, the Son of God, and we have invited him into our hearts. If you haven't done that, you need to do that. It's not a case of going to church every Sunday and getting, putting your tithe in the plate and stand up, sit down, clap your hands when the preacher says so. No, it's developing and starting and receiving a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. That's the key to the whole thing. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. For some, it will be the greatest moment of their lives when they meet Jesus face to face. For others, it will be a time of sorrow and grief because for some, it will be too late. Folks, I don't like to preach stuff like this. It's against my nature. I like to preach about being blessed of God, obeying God, seeking God, loving God, and being loved back from God, and all of the good things of the gospel and of the Bible. But there's some difficult things in the Bible, too, that need to be preached. That's why I like to go through Bible uh, books verse by verse, because they'll come up at the appropriate time. And this is coming up at the appropriate time. And so I'm trusting that it will be reassurance to you about so many things that are happening. You may know some people that are like Legion, probably not living among the tombs, uh, probably not very visible in the community, but they're there. We see a lot of homeless that fill the bill on this. We'll see them living in a box in the alley. 
Folks, that's not what people choose to do. That's not dealing with things with a good attitude. That's doing the best you can with nothing. And a lot of the homeless are in that kind of situation. So, folks, I'd like you to bow your heads. And if any of this rang true in your mind, maybe you want to re-examine your relationship with Jesus. And maybe you'll want to uh, reevaluate your understanding of the things of God. I don't know what God will need you to do. But I pray this. That if there's any doubt in your mind today that you're not a born-again believer, that you will do something about it today and say, Dear Jesus, I want to get this thing settled in my life. Or maybe you've just slipped into some things that I shouldn't have slipped into. And it may be an attitude of, yeah, I'm not really all that interested in this stuff anymore. You know what I'm talking about. And I want to pray for you this morning. Father, the folks that are here are my family. And I pray that you will help all of us, including myself, to obey you and serve you and listen to your voice and turn away from the sin of the world and turn to the grace and mercy and promises of our God. If you are here today and you would like special prayer, to raise your hand, please do not be afraid. I see you. I see you. Anybody else? I see you. Yes, I see you. I see you. Father, you've seen the hands that have been raised for whatever the situation is in their lives. Give them clarity and understanding and reach down and touch them and bless them and fill them with your Holy Spirit. All of us, Lord, reaches out to you this morning, asking for you to take our hand and love us and remember us and bless us and teach us, Lord, to love you and teach us to recognize when Satan is trying to create a problem and rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Thank you. 
will speak to their hearts and that they will be back soon. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. 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 You may be seated.